I bought this TC Helicon Voice Live Play Electric as a backup for this one. The issue is this screen is incredibly dim. Looks kind of okay on camera, but you can see, I plug in this one, doing things one handed is hard. You can see uh, how much brighter this screen is comparatively. So I opened it up, tried to see what I could do. Couldn't really do anything, but I did notice that the screen inside had this website uh, on a ribbon cable on it, on the LCD screen. So I thought, well, I will uh, see if I can figure out, you know, which screen of all the ones here on this site it takes and see if I can find it. So I bought a couple, and if you're watching this video, the repair worked. So let's get into it. The first thing you're going to want to do on the front is to remove this knob by basically lifting it straight up. Uh, you might find that difficult because it is quite recessed in there. I used a tool such as this from this uh, electronics screwdriver set that I have in order to slowly pry. You don't want to do it too hard. Be gentle all around all edges to try to apply tension lightly and equally. And uh, yeah, that should come up. The next thing you're going to want to do is remove the screws on the mic inputs and outputs. Uh, that is a Torx screw, uh, T10H head, and you're going to want to remove all the nuts off the guitar and pedal ends as well. You might want to grab a set of pliers. Um, I think these are just finger tightened for me right now, so I'm going to use my fingers, but a pair of pliers, be gentle with them because they are plastic. Then you're going to lift this whole plate straight up, might snag a little bit there. Then after you do that, you want to remove this plate. This plate is tricky because it's both over top these things and also it's wedged. Hang on a second. It's wedged in a little groove here. So you're going to kind of want to, it would be easier with two hands, but you kind of want to lift up and out. And that's your face plate. After that, you're going to want to lift this straight up. Be very careful because there's a connection in here. Uh, I can't really get a good angle of it, but you'll see it. But basically there is a multi-pin connector that is held in there by tension. So you're going to lift straight up on this. I've already done it, so for the purposes of the video, very carefully, you're going to take this thing and also set it to the side. That is the where all the teeth were. You can see it on there. So that went there. You pulled up very gently on it. And then you're left with this. You can see here's the screen where I got the website to replace the LCD. We're going to go in here and we're going to remove these uh looks like six torque screws same t10h torx head sorry to backtrack a bit guys but i actually decided to leave two of the screws in so go ahead and put two screws back in because we need to remove these plugs out of here and it's going to be a lot easier if the uh board is still braced to something. We're also going to have to disconnect the ribbon cable here for the LCD screen. I'm using this pair of tweezers in order to get these out. They are stuck pretty good. I just moved that one. Um, you could probably use your fingers, but it's going to be kind of difficult. But uh, grab a set of tweezers. Be very delicate. If you can, try to grab these things on the um, short ends, not the long ends. Can't do this one-handed. Okay, so that was very stress-inducing uh, for me. But yeah, you basically grab those ends, try to get something like this underneath the lips, and just work very slowly, slowly pulling each side up bit by bit. You want to lift straight up as much as possible. You don't want to put too much tension on these things. Work slow, go slow. And then, uh, yeah, we want to get rid of this ribbon cable. Now, I've done it once before, so I think that I can do it as simply as... Just like nudging this thing out. Come on. Yeah, there we go. That probably wasn't proper, but it works. So I know that looks sloppy, but this screen's gonna get replaced anyway. This this thing, this little black piece, really just holds this end of the ribbon there by tension. 
Uh, so yeah, let's get these other two torque screws out. Take the circuit board, set it aside somewhere safely. You're gonna take these, these are your buttons, and you're gonna take these off and set them aside safely somewhere. So here was part of the problem finding the screen. One, see the serial number on here matches the serial number that's on these screens. But uh, the screens are different colors. And as you can see, this one screen has an extra ribbon uh, cable, apparently. Uh, additionally, the serial number is the same no matter the size of the screen. So uh, yeah, I kind of had to estimate the sizes because the sizes were not super specific on the website. They only go to the uh, tenths place as opposed to the hundredths place. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to try to put the white or black on white one in just because this extra cable that this one doesn't seem to have. Um, we're going to need another Torx screw this time. The size is a, I'm sorry, not Torx, hex. It is an H1.5. I know this is going to sound insane, but two of the screws were 1.5, but these other two are 1.3. I don't know why they would do that. So the blue screen is slightly larger than the white screen, and I'm a little concerned. It might be hard to see here, but right up here near the top of the screen around this area. There's a little mark that can only be described as like, there you go. It's like a crack or a hair in it. So that doesn't, you know, bode well. But at this point, I just want to get this in here and see if it's brighter. So when you go to put in this screen, you're going to notice that the ribbon cable is going to give you a little bit of resistance here. That's okay because the ribbon cable here was fully bent at like a right angle as well. So we're going to put this in, we're going to give it a little push, and we're going to screw those screws back in. All right, so it's screwed in, no problem, cool. Now we're going to take the buttons, and we're going to put the buttons on top, mindful of that ribbon cable because it is a delicate little thing, but it should be fine because it was before. Be mindful of where this cable goes as well. Hmm. Uh, it doesn't make me feel great, does it? Hmm. That can't be right. Is it not as many pin? No, it's the same width. Why is that being that way? Was it... Oh, I bet it was under that. I bet... Yeah, that's right. Okay, let's lift these up. I'm going to take this and we're going to move it up here. And we're going to let these buttons hold that down a bit. Okay. Yeah, that's probably fine, right? It's fine. All right. So <laughs> then we... Can you tell I'm a professional? So then uh, we're going to put this back on. Um, one thing to note is we need that ribbon to come through that square. So loop that ribbon through that square. We are going to put the uh, six Torx screws. No, are they hex? No, they're Torx. Uh, six torque screws in here, and we're going to reconnect all four of these plugs as well. So as you screw those down, you might notice a little tension that comes from that uh, pot stem on the other side pushing back. So just lift up and then screw down, and just be gentle pushing all these in. This one was the most difficult because it is the new one. Um, and now we're going to feed this into its holder. Now I'm not sure what is the right way I'm supposed to do this as you probably can assume, but basically without creasing it, I'm going to use my finger, screw it. Uh, you want to bend this back and effectively just slide this into that spot. There's no like plugging it in per se. You're just kind of sliding it in there. And then uh, after you put it in there, you want to put that black clip that's there uh, in there so that way it holds with tension. Um, you put it so that way the clips go inside and the open part of the clip, you'll see that there's like, it's kind of shaped like a very shallow C. 
the open part of the clip is where the ribbon is, and the flat part goes up top there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put this back on top there. Uh, remember that the inputs outputs are going to go up where this gap is, and also remember that the teeth that are right there need to go perfectly in there. So slowly lower it down, look at it from the side, and make sure that all the teeth go in and slowly lower it in. Now, once you have the teeth just nestled in there, don't crunch it all the way down yet. You wanna make sure that ribbon cable isn't creasing in any weird way. It will get pushed, but you know, we don't want it to get weirdly pushed or crunched. So don't, uh, don't push the teeth down all the way because what we still need to do is we need to bring back the face plate, right? So we're gonna flip it, orient it properly. That's right. And we're gonna need to slide this in that groove, put it oriented onto the thing and push it down on those teeth, all kinda in one smooth motion. Okay, it doesn't have to be that smooth. I got this on there and oriented, and now I'm gonna push down into the teeth. Okay, so that's been put on. Now we're gonna put this plate on, screw all the screws down, put the washers on, screw those in, and we're gonna turn this bad boy on. All right, so moment of truth. Let's plug it in. Lights up. Play electric. Demo man. And I can tell you, being in the room with this, this is much brighter than it was before. I guess it makes sense, now the buttons are white. So yep, yeah, uh, yep, and there's that little bit of damage that is gonna drive me nuts. So I'm gonna ask the company if they'll send me another one. Uh, if you're out there and you know more than me, this other screen that I got, would this have worked if I just cut this off or would that have been, like is this uh, vestigial if I don't wanna use whatever capabilities this thing uh, allows you to do, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, otherwise, yeah, gonna get me a new one of these, but this works. So I went back and I ended up figuring out what the deal with that blue one was and I put it in. So apparently when I ordered it, I ordered it with a touchscreen and touchscreen connector attached. I went back to the website. It doesn't look like there's a way you can not have it attached, but uh, I basically ripped off the ribbon and I did a little prying to get the glass touch screen off the LCD screen, uh, wiped it down and was able to get it in here. And it's bright as heck and it's perfect. Um, so yeah, again, hope you guys found this helpful and sorry if I was uh, bumbling.